Well, two two point seven. Generally, a motion relating to disclosure or be a bill of particular or a bill of particulars may not be filed, and that's what it says in the statute. It says it may not be filed. Three things: pay your fee, serve and file an affirmation in good faith, serve and file a notice of motion. Can you file an order to show cause? Yeah, but that's not what it says in this particular rule. So, notice of motion. The, preliminary, the PC order in a standard case shall provide for a completion of disclosure within 12 months of the RJI being filed unless the action is a matrimonial. Rule 202.21. Generally, except for application... Rule 202.21. Generally, except for applications for court approval of an infant comp, incompetent settlement or conservancy settlement, no case shall be deemed ready for trial or inquest unless a note of issue accompanied by a certificate of readiness has been filed. And I think it also has to be served. Presumably, there's an opposing party. Um, 202.21 sub E. A motion to vacate a note of issue shall be made within 20 days after service of the note of issue. 2.2.48. Unless otherwise directed by the court, proposed orders or judgments with proof of service shall be. Question 5. Unless otherwise directed by the court, proposed orders or judgments with proof of service shall be submitted for signature where the order is directed to be settled or submitted on notice within 60 days after signing and filing of the decision directing that the order be settled or submitted. And the time rules in this are. If you're gonna send the notice of settlement by mail, you have to do it 10 days in advance. If you're gonna personally deliver it, it's five days. And then proposed counter orders have to be clearly marked with whatever you want changed. And those time rules are seven and two. Rule 202.7, which are true concerning an affirmation of good faith and a notice of motion. An affirmation of good faith shall indicate the time place and nature of the consultations and the issues discussed and any resolutions or shall indicate good cause why no such conferral with opposing counsel was held true a notice of motion is not required on an ex party motion or on a motion attached to an order to show cause true in general an affirmation of good faith must be submitted with a motion relating to discovery or a bill of particulars True. Question 7, 202.27. At any scheduled calendar call or at any conference, if parties do not appear and proceed or announce their readiness to proceed immediately or subject to the engagement of counsel, the judge may note the default on the record. And it actually says may. The judge may note the default. A. If plaintiff appears but defendant does not, Judge shall grant judgment on default or order an inquest. No, that's not that's not true. It's a judge may grant default and may order an inquest. B. If the defendant appears but plaintiff does not, judge may dismiss the action. So far, we're good. And shall order a severance of counterclaims or cross claims. So that one's wrong because it says. So that would be true, the first part is true, but it says the judge may dismiss the action and then it says and shall order severance and counterclaim or uh, severance and counterclaims. No, it's a may. The only one that's actually true is if no party appears, the judge may make such order as appears just. Now I am going to reread the I'm going to reread these as if they were the correct statements. At any scheduled calendar call or at any conference, at it, or at any conference, so yeah, or at any conference, if the parties do not appear and proceed and announce their readiness or announce their readiness to proceed immediately or subject to the engagement of counsel, the judge may note the default on the record and proceed as follows. If the plaintiff appears but defendant does not, judge may grant judgment on default or order an inquest. Next. If defendant appears but plaintiff does not, judge may dismiss action or order a severance of counterclaims and cross claims. Or three, if no party appears, the judge may make such order as appears just. They're all may. In any discontinued action, this is in rule 202, 
the attorney for the defendant shall file a stip or statement of discontinuance with county clerk, that's how I know it's defendant, within 20 days of such discontinuance. But if the action is scheduled for judicial activity within 20 days, such stipulation shall just be filed before the time scheduled for judicial activity. Okay. Rule 202.13. An action may be removed to limited jurisdiction courts without consent, so 325D, including from County Court of Albany to the City Court of Albany, from the Supreme Court in counties within the 1st, 2nd, 11th, and 12th judicial districts to the civil court of the city of New York. 202.6 sub A, at any time after service of process, a party may file an RJI and 202.12 sub A, any party may file a request for PC at any time after service of process. Okay. 202.6b, which, if any, of the following actions is the filing of an RJI and payment of the fee not required? Now, the answer to this is none of the above, because the filing of the RJI is still required. It's just that the fee is waived, not the actual filing of the RJI. But if the question said, when is the fee not required, the answer would be all of these. An application not filed in an action of proceeding, a petition for sale of religious or non-profit property, an application for name change, a habeas corpus proceeding where the move-in is institutionalized. And I think that there's other ones, but those four are... So the total list of the ones where the fee is not required for the RJI, an application not filed in an action of proceeding, petition for sale or finance of religious, religious or non-profit property, an application for name change, a habeas corpus proceeding where the move-in is institutionalized, application to obtain disclosure for an out-of-state action, a retention proceeding authorized by Article 9 Mental Hygiene Law, any proceeding authorized by Article 10 Mental Hygiene Law, appeal to county court in a civil case from like a town, village or city court, um, vacated judgment on account of bankruptcy and order authorizing emergency surgery or within within New York City only an uncontested action annulment divorce or separation so it's not any any matrimonial action I think it's only de- it's a 9 10 11 DRL 2 2.16 generally um, a preliminary conference shall be held within 40 generally a preliminary conference shall be scheduled by the court within 45 days of the filing of the RJI all right rule 202.12 right out of the rule it says um, the party can request the PC anytime after service of process then there's a list of what has to be on the PC request title of action index number names addresses telephone numbers all attorneys appearing nature of action if it's not been assigned to a judge, the party has to file an RJI at the same time. The court shall notify all parties of the scheduled conference, which shall be within within 45 days of the filing of the RJI, unless the court orders otherwise. So that's like a soft 45 days. After assignment of a matrimonial action to an IAS judge, the assigned judge shall order a preliminary conference to be held within 40 five days after the action has been assigned to him. So the first one is measured from when the RJI is filed or like the request for PC comes in and matrimonial one, it's within 45 days after the action has been assigned to him, period. The other one says, um, unless the court orders otherwise, but the matrimonial action one is a hard 45 day rule. The other one is a soft 45 day rule. And the mandatory settlement conference in residential foreclosures, that one is 60 days. And the defendant has to notify the court at least seven days prior to the mandatory settlement conference if he's going to be able to ten- attend the conference by telephone. He has to notify the court by telephone at least seven days before the scheduled conference. Okay, this next one, rule 2.5-A. I'm going to read this rule with only the correct answers in it because the question was asking for which one is false and it's about fax filing. Nobody uses it anymore, but it's pretty similar to the rules for e-filing. So here we go. 
Uh, the cover page shall state the nature of the paper, the name, address, phone number of the filing party or attorney, the fax number that may receive a return fax, and the total number of pages, including cover page, being filed. Two, pages including exhibits shall comply with 2102 and shall be assigned as shall be signed as required by law. Clerk doesn't have to accept more than 50 pages in length, including the cover page, but excluding the credit card or debit card authorization sheet. Can't be fucked up um, for uh, an hour after 12 noon. The appropriate clerk shall deem the UCS fax server subject to a technical failure if it is unable to accept filings for a period greater than one hour, either continuously or intermittently after 12 and if there is a technical failure, and this is also, I believe, true for e-filing with the NICEF site, um, then anything that can be, has a time limit on it, except for something like statute of limitations that a court cannot extend the time for. So extended for one day for each day that there is a technical failure, or other, unless the court orders otherwise. Unless court orders otherwise. Question 17. With regard to mandatory settlement conferences in residential foreclosures, the court shall promptly send to the parties or their attorneys a notice scheduling such conference to be held within 60 days of the filing of the specialized RJI. Because remember, in a residential foreclosure action, the plaintiff has to file a specialized RJI. 2.2.21, which is false. So again, I'm going to do this. I'm going to read them all as if they're true. A note of issue and certificate of readiness is not required for petitions for court approval of the settlement of a claim of a conservancy infant or incompetent within 10 days after service, the original note of issue, the certificate of readiness when required with proof of service when service is required shall be filed in duplicate with the county clerk together with payment of the fee required by 8020 or a copy of an order permitting the, the, permitting the filing party to proceed as a poor person. So permitting the filing party to proceed as a poor person. Three, the county clerk shall forward one of the duplicate originals of the note of issue to the clerk of the trial court stamped either fee paid or poor person order. The note of issue shall include the county clerk's index number, the name of the assigned judge or justice, the name, office address, and phone number of each attorney, name, address, phone number of a pro se party, and name of any insurance carrier acting on behalf of any party.